It's about that time again. What is up, quarantine squad? If you're watching this, that means you got another day. Hopefully everybody's finding ways to be productive indoors. I know I am because I am still editing tons and tons of footage for you guys. Anyway, let's not waste some time. Let's jump right into it. Today, we're going to be working on this uh, collab. My wonderful model here, Jessica, and a guy that you guys may have heard of, Hayden Peterson. I had never heard of him before. It's uh, at Haydos underscore Peterson. I'll put his IG in the handle or in the description below. Uh, this was a collab photo shoot battle thing with him. Anyway, I shot some BTS. And today, guys, we're going to be doing tone curves. I know I keep talking about it. I keep forgetting in the tutorials. Don't worry. It's happening. All right, let's start this thing off. Hit my presets. Drop in the levels. So that way you have all the points in the tone curves that I keep forgetting to use. X this out. And we're just gonna walk you through this really quick. Um, just get everything balanced out here. Ooh, I love that. We might just stick with that right there. Let's see what some other whites look like. Um, no. I really liked the shoes. Let's go with that. I like the blue, the cool tones. This is moody. Let's do it. Let's just rock with it. All right, let's get that exposure going. I've been making my photos brighter lately because I edit them on like a super bright screen, max brightness, and uh, then they go on IG and I realize that, oh shoot, this actually isn't very bright. So I've been editing them brighter than I think they should be because when you look at them on your dim screens in your cubicles, um, they actually uh, are not bright enough. Okay, so let me make sure my all of these sliders are good. If you're confused on how to use these sliders, watch one of my other tutorials. I'm just kind of rolling through this quickly for the sake of focusing on other parts of photo editing for you guys. All right, let's get that red up. Where's the oranges in her <clears throat> in her skin? Make it a little bit red. Boost the luminance. Where's the yellow? Probably gonna get rid of all the yellow in this. Hmm, I don't know. I kind of like it. Should we keep it in the corner or no? I vote no. Goodbye. Um, oh, there's some in the mask. Yeah, still bye. All right, where's the greens at? In the smoke, right? Nope, none in the smoke. Where's the blues? Oh, it's blue in the smoke. That I'm looking at that top top hand smoke. Let's uh, ooh, interesting. Let's go far here because I want as much contrast in the other color as we can get. Let's make it a little bit brighter there. This is actually turning out to look pretty cool. White balance really does a lot for you, honestly. Boost up saturation there. Ooh, we could go two different directions here. I think even though you see more of the smoke with the luminance down, I think I like how it looks boosted up more because we got the light coming in right here. That is dope. And we're going to work with the light up here in a second. Again, I'm just thinking 10 steps ahead on this thing. You know, what we're going to do with colors later on. Oh, yeah, this is going to be great. I love these hues. And we haven't even messed with the tone curve yet, guys. This is This is looking nice. Oh yeah, the blues are right on the money. Okay. Tone curves I always do last anyway. That's why I was forgetting them in some of the other tutorials. Also, shout out to Lightroom for adding a new slider since last time. There's a texture slider, which is similar to clarity, but just a little bit different. It's nice because I can drop the clarity make everything kind of look smooth, but then add texture back into it. Vignette. It's not a Bilko picture without a vignette. Dehaze, what is that? What is that looking like? Do we want dehaze? Or do we want less dehaze? I think less. Let's do a little bit less. Because I'm still looking at these highlights that are blown out in the background, and I like it. A little, little bit of noise reduction with the tad bit of sharpening. Okay, for the most part, photo edited. Okay, this is where I stopped back when I was an amateur. Now, it's time to tone curve it up. You guys ready for this? Okay, so we're gonna focus on this guy first. Um, and keep in mind, I'm still learning tone curves. Like, I've only been doing tone curves for maybe a month now before I feel comfortable kind of telling you guys like what I know. Um, so, this might change. My strategy for tone curves might change as I edit. In fact, I almost guarantee it will because I'm gonna get better with them and my strategy's gonna change. Okay, this. Now these are preset points. When I add the levels preset on it, all it does is add these little bullet points as references. 
you can kind of see where they are on each each curve. I basically have one in the middle and two on the sides and then one on the ends. This one's a little different. I added an extra one here so I could play with the tail because you can see it it, it plays with the darkest shadows. Um, but I want to keep the detail in the uh, bridge there so I'm not going to mess with that as usual. And then you can also do this if you want to adjust even more of the shadows but I kind of like it just like that. That's perfect. Um, so sometimes I just kind of I kind of wiggle these sliders basically to see what on the photo it's messing with and if I want to adjust that item it's similar to like like whites like I, I'll adjust the white slider and see what on the photo is changing and kind of stop it where I like it I actually like the whites pretty ramped up that's cool um mm, let's contrast these better I'm basically just doing that with the sliders. The, uh, these are basically like sliders. I'm going up and down, but at a diagonal, up and down, up and down. And if you look at the histogram, it'll tell you where a lot of a lot of action is going on in the shadows. See this this high curve see here in the reds. A lot of action is in the is in the deeper reds and the greens as well, and even here. So you can kind of see like if I adjust this slider, it's going to affect more of the photo than if I adjust this this slider. See like almost nothing in the photo changes, not as much, right? But we do this bottom one. And look at how much of the photo is changing because I don't know there's like the bigger curve there anyway again I'm still learning all right so I think we're done with here what does this guy change hmm I don't really let's see that's darker flatter that's harsher brighter I like harsh and bright I'm really liking this light here or in around here that looks that looks great we're gonna keep it up just a little bit harsher on to reds so the reds and uh, whatever that color is. So let's see what this is changing up here. It looks like around the concrete and her hair and the glare on her hair. So it's like, do we want these a little more blue or we want these more red? I don't want to change them at all. I like them white-ish. So we're going to leave those. Then we're going to skip down here and see. Oh, a lot has changed. We're definitely going to make the background-ish more, like, I guess, teal-ish. I want it to have that matrix look to it. Just barely. That's enough right there. Tone curves are so powerful, you really don't need to do a lot. And I don't think I'm going to adjust anything in the middle because the middle is playing with things that I don't want to play with. I looked at this one and I can just kind of tell based on where this one was and what it was adjusting, this one is going to adjust similar items, mostly the pavement. And I just didn't want to mess with that. But I do want to change the lighting and all the shadows, and that's what this one did. All right, let's look at the green and the purples. A lot of times, Photos just missing a little bit of green. That's what visuals told me. Brandon, sometimes just adding a bump of green can really make a photo look less in camera, I guess. Sometimes purple is good, but adding green is just, I don't know, magic sometimes. But I'm not liking green or purple in this. I like the blues. I like that we're focusing on the blues here. So green and purple, I think I'm going to leave that whole tone curve alone, actually. Yeah... Yeah, we're going to leave it alone. Here's where we're going to do some business. The yellow and the blue, which is also what you adjust in your temperature. This is kind of like a temperature curve, and this is kind of like a tint curve. See, it's doing the same thing, except tint does it for the whole photo. You do the curve, you're basically isolating parts of the photo and adjusting tint for parts of the photo, which is great if you want to make like a subject stand out and a background change colors. Tone curve is the way to go. All right. What are we changing here? Pavement again. So the pavement is kind of like on a default is kind of like almost yellow. Your your eye will get more trained to this over time. And I'd rather it be that bluish. Let's see what yellow looks like actually. Yeah, I I like blue better. What is this changing? Ooh, the light above. Hmm, I think I'm gonna go just a bump tan. Because I want this blackness up here to stay black. So I want this to be bluish, this to look more black, and less blue. So I added yellow to the top by bringing this down. And I added blue right here by bringing this just a bump up. You can see just how, how very, very sensitive the tone curve is. But I think a little bit of blending by bringing this down is just making that pavement just all kind of come together in a way that I like. Okay. I think that's it for the tone curve. This one, have no clue. No freaking idea. 
so don't ask. Um, I don't know. The pavement looks a little unnatural, actually, in that color. I don't know. Let, let's go back. Let's revisit this tone curve. You guys wanted tone curve stuff, so you're getting it. In hindsight, I think it's better tan for contrast with the roof. Oh, now we're getting too tan, and it's losing that matrix look that I liked from earlier. Um, I have a solution. Let's brush it. I'm just not super stoked with the color. Hit O two times on the keyboard. Brings up your mask. Also, a new update on uh, this. Reset sliders automatically. So every time I bring out a new brush, it's got reset sliders, which is a nice little update from the last time we used this. I think what I'm going to end up doing is just pulling just a hair of saturation out this out of the pavement because I think we might just have too much saturation going on. Like we have the right hues, there's just too much color in it. We need less color. Because I don't want the, I won't want the, this whole image to be too busy. I want the focus to be on her and the colors in her hands, not on the pavement. I'm doing a very sloppy job by the way, but you know, her pants are going to be black anyway, so whatever. Sue me. Let's take some color out of her shoes too. Probably not the little heart man. Okay, let's take that overlay off by hitting O twice. Let me reset the slider so you can see what we did. Hmm, do we want it to be grayer? It just looks more yellow to me. What about, hmm, but more blue? That's definitely worse. Let's do this. Let's play with the hue or the temperature. Um, I like that, tan. Okay, boom, there we go. Now let's uh, let's uh, brush this up a little bit around her shoes. That's the color we wanted. I'm down with it. There's like a I don't even know how to describe it. You guys saw how we got it. Cool. I like the color of the concrete back here. That's nice. You can see Hayden's uh, camera right there. All right, now to make the subject stand out, let's hit the brush, and I'm using the brackets to change the size of the brush. Hit O2 times on the keyboard to bring up the mask overlay so we can actually see where we're painting here. Reset that. And just paint out the subject. Now we're gonna do the, the smoke separately because I want the subject to be smooth and black. And I want the color of the smoke to be texturized and rich in color. So we're gonna do two separate brushes. I'm still lagging on the on the brush. I think my brain is lagging too, you guys. Like I wanna to go to bed so bad. But here we are, editing photos because vlogs gotta go up or tutorials gotta go up every Tuesday and Thursday. I'm committed, man. We're in. We're in this thing. Alright, you know what? Let's paint her face too. Come on, computer. You got this. I believe in you. I was going to do the Edmund vlog, Edmund Mondi vlog for tomorrow, but I think I'll do that next week because I really want to spend some time on it and I think I'm going to spend the weekend working on it. It was the World Star vlog, um, the video we shot for World Star, whether they posted it or not. It was like a bunch of donuts and there were models and it was awesome. So look forward to that one. I'm excited to release it. It's such good footage. Okay. Hit O twice, let's get rid of that mask and let's start playing with these colors. I already know what I'm gonna do first, ramp up her exposure. We need this subject to stand out. Nice. And let's dehaze it a little bit and crush the blacks. Boom. Um, looks a little weird on her face. We're getting there though, we're getting there. The lag on this computer though. Are we, is her face painted? Hit O twice. See what comes up. Yeah, it's painted. Okay, there's just some weird coloration there on the end. I was looking at the lips. It was just like, it was just not clean. So I think we're going to have to do something separate on the face. Okay. Let's see what Clarity does. I think I might make Clarity smoother, actually. Add a little bit of texture back. See what that does for us. Pull out just a tad bit of saturation. There's some green and blue hues going on in her outfit because that's what we were doing for up here. And her outfit's about the same color. 
So we're isolating our outfit by pulling the color out of it and just getting a better contrast with the overpass color. Pull some more out, add some more tan. Actually, how about some less tan? Let's see if that helps. More purple. I want this, these blacks to look blacker. I think, how about a lot more? Yeah, okay, now we've got, oh. Don't pay attention to her face. Color the outfit. I'm gonna vote a little more saturation. See what this does. Um, it's getting a little too blue for my taste. Let's dial that back. Okay. Yeah, that'll work. Now let's erase, hit O two times, let's erase the color on her face. Because obviously that looks atrocious. This computer will catch up. There we go. We're gonna do a separate brush for her face because it's not we don't we all have the same color goals on her face as we do for the uh, jacket. All right, hit O two more times. Get rid of that overlay. Hit the brush. We're gonna do a new point. You can see where the old point is right here. A new point. Hit O two times. See where we're painting here. Let's just paint her face. If you want to, you can click auto mask and uh, it'll do a better job of lining up the face, but, but it also lags a little bit more, and for the sake of timing, I'm just gonna kinda ballpark this. All right, hit O two more times, get rid of that. Now, first thing, clarity, drop that. Texture, drop that. We want smooth face, noise to the right. It's gonna smooth out her face a lot. Bring up the shadows just a bit and the contrast down. You're gonna see those edges start to just melt away. Bring up the exposure a tad, saturation a tad. Tint a little green, temp a little tan. You're gonna see some life come back in this as it catches up with me. Whites up. Whoa, that was a jump. All right, maybe not that drastic. Bring down the whites and the exposure here. Maybe even the highlights just a tad. See that catch up. Ah, there's it, there it is, that's on the money. Still just a little too tan, a little too spray tan. Like, let's bring the saturation down a little bit, just a more natural color, and this down to like one. See what that does for us. Yeah, now we're in business. That looks a lot better. It's a moody skin tone, not what I would normally do, but it works for this photo because um, it just, I don't know, it looks moody. It's not the focus of the photo. All right, her hair. Getting a little too harsh on the glare on her hair. Hit O2 times. Bring up the mask, and we're gonna paint in her hair. I'm gonna be doing tone curves on every one of these photo tutorials, so if you don't fully understand it, don't freak out. Just watch another tutorial that came out after this, because I'm gonna have tones on it. Tone curves. I think we're all learning some things here, though, that are different than the other tutorials. And if there's specific questions that you guys have in Lightroom or Photoshop, drop a comment. I'll answer them. I answer every comment very fast. All right, hit O two times. Get rid of the uh, mask there. I already know I'm gonna bring down highlights. I already know I'm gonna bring down saturation. I'm gonna see where her hair looks like almost platinum. So reset all these guys. Bring down the highlights. Let's bring that clarity down. Bring down the saturation a lot. Let's see what platinum looking hair looks like. Hmm, it looks cool, but I it looks green. Maybe that and that. And then a little more saturation. A little less highlights. How's that look? Ooh, I like it. Ooh, I like it. Okay. Just a little more paint action here. Around her edges. You can see how just that, that harsh, harsh glare came off her, her hair. We have a little more detail, a little less saturation. Just looks nice. Because they gotta decide where do you want the eye to go in your photo? What's what's the focus here? And at least my goal for the edit is, is her, but it's really the smoke. The smoke is the action. So like her face is a part of this, but it's not the focus of the entire photo. Okay, I'm loving the colors in this shot. Gradients up next. Let's hit the 
horizontal gradient here. We're going to darken up the top there. Bring that down. All right. We're going to darken down here too. Just a little bit of dehaze action. Actually, I might rotate this boy. There we go. Bring that down. I'm seeing a little bit of green action for some reason. That's okay. I can raise up the tint, drop the saturation, pull the green right out of it. I know you might not see the green. I see the green. Drop the exposure, a little more dehaze, a little uh, less clarity, less. See what that does. Sorry for the lag, guys. Okay. I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay. Gradients are where I want them. Now for the fun part, let's add in some light. And he said, let there be light. Ramp up that exposure a lot. Dehaze makes it look foggier, basically. If it catches up, clarity makes it softer. Saturation pulls the color, but we're gonna make it more blue. I think we need, uh, there it comes, okay. Good light, but it's too grainy. Noise all the way to the right, clarity down a little bit, texture down a little bit, that should get rid of some of that grain. Let's see how that looks. And we're going to need to adjust the hue on this because that blue just doesn't match the other blues. Oh, well, a little bit. That's better. Maybe a little more blue. A little dash of purple in there. It might need a dash of green. We'll have to see in a second once it catches up. You know what? Maybe if I eject this guy, it'll move faster. Catching up? Okay, a lot smoother there. Or you can, oh, okay, it's gonna be like that. Moody. All right, this is smooth, I like that. It's a little too in my face, so I'm gonna click and drag it just a little bit higher up. Stretch it down some. There we go. Now we're in the money. Let's exaggerate what's going on over here a little bit. Make a little, little bubble. I like that. Shoot, I don't even know if we have to adjust anything. Maybe a little less harsh. Just a little bit. It just looks cool. Yeah, there we go. Less harsh is, is the move for sure. You know what? That looks cool, white. What if we did white up here? Let's zoom out and see what the top, top part looks like. Of course, my computer's like, you know what? I see that you're trying to film. Watch me as I go mass, max lag possible. <laughs> All right, well, I guess we're just gonna keep the top part freaking blue because my computer says I hate you. Okay, for the most part, the colors here are done. So if that's all you care about, you can stop watching the video. But if you wanna know some Photoshop secrets on how to really take this to the next level, let Photoshop load. And here's the thing, you always gotta ask yourself, how can I make my video, or how can I make my photos just a little bit better? And sometimes just that extra little step here, in this case, bringing it in Photoshop, is gonna be the difference. Because it's great right now, but it could be stellar if we do some Photoshop magic. Because what we're gonna do, here's what I have plans for. I'm getting rid of that bus first. Get rid of some junk in the pavement here. Getting rid of this distraction over here. I might get rid of some of these lights, like that light and that light. Any of the dots up in the ceiling. These are all distractions. They need to go. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? We need to paint our smoke. So let me hit that paintbrush. Let me get that plus. You know, I'm glad, I'm glad we caught this. Hit O two times. Yo, this thing tripping right now. This gotta go. Okay, O two times. Got it, let's paint that. Smoke in. Oh my goodness, get out of my face. Wow, max lag mode, computer. Max, I'm about to force eject this smoke. You know what, for the sake of it, you're gonna get force eject. I'm sorry. Kids, look away, don't try this at home. Up, uh, up, uh, up, uh. all right, see ya. And then the whole thing comes crashing down. Oh, maybe that was what was holding us back. Okay. 
Make that a little bit smaller. We're going to paint up here. Now, we're not really going to change the colors, so I can do both smokes at the same time. What I'm going to change is the texture and the clarity because everything else in the photo right now is smooth and nice and easy. Low noise, low clarity, low texture. We're going to do the opposite for the smoke because the smoke is the focus. We need it to be different. So hit O2 times and let's raise this clarity and just see what that does for us. I'm going to raise the texture too and the sharpness. Let it catch up. I'm excited. Maybe a dash of saturation. Maybe that's too much. All right. Well, I can't tell if it changed already or not. Let's just max out exposure and see how long that takes to adjust. This is really, okay. All right, so we've got our clarity up now because it only took about a second. I think it's the screen grab that's really slowing it down. More clarity, more texture, actually a lot of texture. More clarity, a little bit of dehaze. See what that gives us. I like it. Pull some of the highlights out. Oh, you can definitely start to see it coming in now. That detail's looking really nice. But as you increase clarity, your your highlights get harsher. So you might have to dial those back just a tad. Oh, actually dialing back highlights a lot is really bringing a lot of detail back in that smoke. I'm so happy with the colors of this edit. These look so good. Okay, I think we're ready for Photoshop now. That was a big difference. That was very essential. Paint this up. Oh, never mind. That looks crazy. Let's not do that. Perfect. Okay. Head in Photoshop. Now bring it in Photoshop. Okay, guys, I'm going to be doing tutorials like this a lot, all right? So please, if you see a photo that I post, comment, hey, do a photo from this shoot, you know, do a tutorial with this. Um, like if I, if you like the Edmund Mondi photos, which are down here, be like, hey, look, do a tutorial with an Edmund Mondi photo or do a tutorial with a Yana pic, you know, over here. If you see me post something, if you see an effect that I do, because a lot of times I've been posting the raws, be like, yo, how did you get that effect? How did you get that glare? How did you get that overlay? You know, whatever it is. Um, let me know and then tell me you want to you see it in a tutorial because the point of these tutorials is to help you guys. So, you know. All right. Hit J on the keyboard. J is the repair key. Brackets. Make it bigger. And let's just start getting rid of, let's just clean up the room, man. Clean it up. That bus. Gotta go. Ugly mofo. See ya, nerd. Oh, that... Oh, this bus is going to make it difficult for me. Going to have to take it out in pieces. Oh, the bus is definitely going to make it difficult for me. Uh, Come on, bus. Ugh, gross. There's like no like clean way to do this. Let me try stamp. Let me clone stamp him out. Hit, uh, hit S for clone stamp. Hit option on your keyboard and then click and you basically are sampling that circle. So we're gonna try this. We're gonna try to clone stamp him out. Uh, this is gonna be so sloppy. I'm gonna do my best. Now hit J and try to clean it up with J. Ah, you know, maybe it'll work. It's promising enough. I know somebody's gonna comment on this and be like, I can still tell the bus was there. <laughs> like, cool, thanks. <laughs> Uh, this is the whole photo was going so great until this bus just pulled up and just ruined everything that's okay that's okay we'll survive also I know that I keep saying I'm going to do preset packs guys you want to know what's holding me back I have no idea how to set up a Shopify store I tried I spent like hours on it I lost a whole day and then I got frustrated and I just gave up I quit so if you know how to set up a, a Shopify store you want to help me get these presets up? I'd be happy to send them to you and um, let you have some even if you give me some pointers on how to do this Shopify thing. I wanted to sell them like dirt cheap too because like some creators out there have their presets for like $200. This is a craziness, right? I was going to make mine $4.99. It's like crazy cheap. So it's like you don't even have to think about it. You're like, yes, these are going to help me buy. Same thing with the t-shirts. I want to do t-shirts and sell them for like almost nothing. 
All right, let's get rid of what's up here. I have designed the t-shirts, by the way. They're already done. I just, it's that marketplace, man. I don't know how to do it. That drove me crazy. I ended up just giving up and watching The Bachelor instead. All right. I want to get rid of some of these dots here. Yeah, this is going to be a long tutorial. That's okay. There's a lot of good info in here. You guys can just like, I don't know, skip around. All right, let's get rid of... I mean, now you guys know, like, this is why I charge for my shoots, because this is one photo. One. You know? Whenever I get a client that buys, like, ten photos, that's a lot of time. It's like five hours. You know? At least. And that's not even counting shoot time. And then you got to account for, like, what if, like... I've had clients say, oh, order the 40 photo packages. That's a lot of time editing. Like a tremendous. So when people are like, oh yeah, let me collab. I have to think really hard about it. I'm like, is that worth it? Because you see how much time there is here on the back end. Like this was a collab. This is worth it because that was fun. Hayden is cool. All right. Getting rid of all these little distractions here. I think that might, for the sake of the, of the tutorial, I think I might end it after I clean this up. Because I don't think I really want to add much to this. I think the colors turned out great. I think we got a lot going on in the photo already. I'm going to leave Hayden's camera in this. I don't think it's necessary to add anything else in this photo. There might be some things that you could add to make it crazier. I'm sure there are, but I'm just going to leave it at this because it just that's a good looking photo right there. Oh, I'm so glad I got my screen clean today. Everything looks so crystal and nice. Actually, I'm going to leave that. I like how that looks get rid of that guy oh her hair we're gonna need to clean that up just a little bit haircut man you can't even get a haircut in LA right now everything's shut down for the quarantine everything all the I'm gonna be looking like little dicky by the time this thing's over oh that looks terrible all right nice nice get these flyaways I don't really need to do too much to her hair is pretty much perfect when she showed up um, I'm going to link Jessica in the description below too. Stellar model in Los Angeles. Super sweet. Very smart. Um, you guys are going to enjoy following her. She has a very unique page too. Alright. Took care of her flyaways. Gave her the haircut. See a couple more spots here. Alright. I think we're good ladies and gentlemen. Friends and neighbors. Look at how much cleaner that looks. That's what I'm talking about. Alright. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Liking these videos really takes it a long way. That's the best thing you can do for the video. And of course, if you subscribe, you'll catch more tutorials like this because I'm going to edit. I'm going to put one up like every week or every other week. So there's tons of stuff to learn as I share literally every secret that I possibly can with you guys. And we release these videos every Thursday and every single Tuesday. And I will catch you next week. Peace.